Hi, this is Neil Kumar, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Import Classes. In this brief video, I will be discussing the nine most common data mining tasks. It's important to note that these nine tasks serve as the foundation for more complex data science tasks, such as neural networks. What I've done to make this easy is I've broken this down into supervised tasks, unsupervised tasks, and let's call it the ambiguous bucket. Just to refresh your memory, supervised tasks are ones where the target or goal is clear and specific, while unsupervised tasks are ones where the target or goal is unclear and not specific. And for more information on supervised versus unsupervised methods, we've actually created a video specifically on that topic. Now to get back on task, the first data mining task that I'd like to go over is classification slash, slash class probability estimation. In this particular task, what we attempt to do is predict for each individual population which class it belongs to. So an example of a question that you could answer uh, with the classification task is which borrowers will default on loans? In this particular question, there are two uh, classes. There is the default class and the no default class. And it's important to note that both of these classes are mutually exclusive. And you should make sure that in your particular tasks that that's also true. Each class should be mutually exclusive. The second type of supervised task I'll go over is regression. And this attempts to estimate what a, variable, what a variable or variables will be for an individual. And there are many different types of regressions out there, including linear, nonlinear, single variable, and multivariable. The main difference between regression and classification tasks are that, classif are that classification tasks uh, are more qualitative in nature, and they are attempting to determine whether something will happen. Again, they're class-driven. While regression is numerical, we're attempting to answer how much something will happen. So a typical uh, regression problem that you could answer uh, relates to sales. So you could ask, you could answer, what will future sales be if we spend money on a particular marketing channel? And what this model will attempt to do is learn from past data points and apply the learnings to future instances. So you'll end up with, again, a numerical output. The third type of supervised task I'm going to go over is causal modeling. And this attempts to understand what events led to other events. It differentiates between causation and correlation. In other words, just because two events happen uh, sequentially does not mean that, for example, event A led to event B. They could have just happened uh, together. So, <clears throat> so an example of a causal model that, uh, a causal problem that you could answer is did visitors visit our website because they are interested in buying our products or services, or did they visit because we are the only provider of free resources? Causal models could attempt to break that problem down and hopefully draw some meaningful conclusions. Now shifting to unsupervised tasks, the first one I'm going to go over is clustering. And this attempts to group individuals and in a population together by similarity. So Typically, clustering and these other two unsupervised tasks are part of a, let's call it a preliminary exploration approach, where uh, the data scientist is just trying to understand if the data that they have can lead to more meaningful conclusions. So typically, you'll find that tasks such as clustering lead to other more meaningful data science tasks. An example of, an, of a clustering task that you could encounter is which groups of employees have a higher likelihood of quitting their jobs. Again, we're trying to figure out which, which groups of employees would be leaving. The fifth type of unsupervised task I'm going to go over is co-occurrence grouping. And this is also known as association rule discovery. And it attempts to find associations between individuals based on transactions involving them. So an example that hopefully many of you can relate to is Netflix's uh, recommendation engine. So you may have watched Braveheart. So when you get to the end of that video, uh, the next thing that you may see on the Netflix screen is since you liked Braveheart, other movies you may enjoy could be Last of the Mohicans, Last of the Mohicans, or The Patriot, or some other video. Clearly, what Netflix is doing is they're looking at what you watched versus what other customers who are similar to you have watched and recommend movies uh, to both sets of groups. 
The sixth type of task I'm going to go over is profiling, and this is also known as behavior description, and it attempts to characterize typical behavior of an individual group or population. So a question you could answer is, what is the typical profile of company truck drivers who have received the highest annual reviews over the last 10 years? The seventh type of task I'm going to go over is similarity matching. And these three type of tasks, as you can see, are not clearly supervised or unsupervised. They could be one or one or the could be either one, depending on the task you're trying to uh, address. So similarity matching attempts to identify similar individ individuals based on data known about them. So a question you could answer, which prospects are most similar to customers we've landed before so that our sales teams can focus their energy, time, and resources on converting those prospects to, let's call it marketed, marketing qualified leads. The eighth type of task I'm going to go over is link prediction. And what this task is, is it attempts to suggest links between data items. Uh, it will suggest that these links exist, and they may even try to quantify the strength of the link. So the classic example uh, of a uh, link prediction task is one hopefully you can relate to as well, and that's with LinkedIn. So you might see on LinkedIn, given that you and Katie have 100 connections in common, would you like to connect with Katie? So it's attempting to link uh, a connection between you and Katie, given your the connections that you have in common. The last and final type of data mining task that I'll be going over today is called data reduction. And what this is essentially doing is it's taking a larger data set and taking a small subset of that larger data set to be representative of the data set. And in this process, sure, information could be lost, but processing time and efficiency of handling the data goes up drastically. But it's also important to note that, uh, that taking a slice of data does not have to lead to not meaningful business conclusions. In fact, working with smaller data sets can lead to equally meaningful business conclusions. And really the idea behind this very last task is that, you know, in statistics, we know that samples can be representative of populations. So that's really the, the basic idea of this, of this final data mining task. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction into the nine most common data mining tasks. And I encourage you to watch other videos that we will be publishing on other hot data science topics. Many thanks for watching and have a great day.